everybody. Pete Werner here with another episode of, well, a quasi-episode of the DCL show uh, on board the Disney Fantasy. Um, and uh, back in September, we did a complete review of the Fantasy. Uh, reviewed all the restaurants, staterooms, things like that. Um, but it had dawned on me that uh, we never reviewed Cabanas. So I thought on this trip, because uh, we're on the uh, eight-night sailing uh, to Bermuda. We're actually in Bermuda right now, um, our second day. And I realized, like I said, we've never done cabanas uh, or reviewed cabanas. So I wanted to make sure we got a review in here. So we're here at lunch. It's uh, 1230 in the afternoon. Not too crazy crowd-wise, because I think some people are off the ship. But I uh, thought uh, we'd give it a try. And I'm joined uh, today by uh, Panda, who's on the camera right now, um, from cdisney.com, our Spanish language website. Uh, Federico Argar is with us. And my friend Ray is here as well, but Ray's not going to be on camera. Ray's just going to tell Panda what he thinks uh, and share his thoughts that way. Uh, and just a reminder, this vlog, along with all the content we produce, brought to you by dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. And if you like our content and you want to show your support, best way to do that is to book your next Disney Cruise Line vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. You're going to get a fantastic shipboard credit. You're going to get the services of an incredible agent who will help you navigate, no pun intended, uh, anything you need to do in planning your cruise. And, you're going to, and it's all for the same price you're going to pay Disney. So please, dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. I was kind of deliberate and what I chose to do this, um, I wanted to choose stuff that was easy to screw up. Um, you know, it's a buffet, and Disney buffets are notoriously not good. So, I'm not trying to stack the deck against them, but I wanted to see how good this was, because like I said, this is stuff that's easy to screw up. For example, I got the uh, barbecue beef brisket, um, really easy to screw that up. Penne pasta with uh, roasted butternut squash and chicken. I got a chicken breast with papaya, mango, cilantro uh, in a Caribbean curry sauce. Um, along with some mac and cheese and a corn dog because I just wanted the corn dog. Uh, and I have to be honest, um, this is really good. This is really good. Um, the beef brisket, tender as could be, very flavorful. I think the barbecue sauce on it is a little much, um, but it was really, really well cooked. Um, the chicken breast, like I said, I picked it because it's a thin breast. It's a thin piece of chicken, really easy to overcook it and dry it out, and they didn't. It is tender, it is moist, and uh, the curry flavoring, the mango flavoring, complements it really, really well without over being overpowering. Um, the pasta, really easy when you're bulk cooking pasta to overcook it and make it mushy and kind of neat. Not the case here. Um, it's really perfectly cooked. It's not al dente, but it's perfectly cooked. They didn't overcook it. Let me put it to you that way. Uh, the red sauce they're using has a little bit of a kick, which I don't think is necessary. Uh, it's not overwhelming because I'm really sensitive to spicy food. So um, I notice any kick at all in something. Um, so it's not bad at all. Uh, it's just I don't think it's necessary. Um, mac and cheese is mac and cheese. It's good. It's good. Um, and the corn dog was really good. But like I said, the corn dog I just put on there because I like corn dogs. And I'm like, oh, that, that'll be good. Um, but over, overall, I got to be honest, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This is a really, really good lunch. Um, and I usually avoid cabanas because I automatically think that's going to be crap. And so this is kind of surprising. I came in here with that attitude that this is going to be a crappy, crappy lunch. I'm going to be honest. 
this is better than the lunch we had in Royal Court a few nights ago, a few days ago. Uh, much better. Much better. So, there you have that. We'll take a look at dessert in a little while. So the Royal Court does a mild curry chicken that I love, and we've never reviewed it because it's a specific lunch. I never know what day they're doing it. So they had it here today. It said mild chicken curry. It's not the same. It's a vegan dish, so it's kind of tofu and a red curry instead of the yellow curry downstairs. I don't like it. The tofu itself is just not my thing. Uh, it could be expectation-based that I'm so disappointed, though, because I expected the same thing that we had at Royal Court and we didn't get it. The red curry, to me, was not strong enough, the curry flavor. It was cold. Ah, I'm going to go get something else. I just wanted you to know about this curry thing. It wasn't for me. Hello, guys. Um, so I had a dish full with uh, meat, different animals, uh, because that's what I wanted to eat. And I'm gonna start with the thing I liked the most, which was the mussels. Uh, they were fresh, they had like a sea flavor. You can tell that they were well cooked. They were like under or overcooked. I really, really liked them. They were big, they were like something that you can like really enjoy and they're hard to get in like fresh in Colombia. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I also had some shrimp that they were good. I'm not a fan of the shrimps they have here at Cabanas usually, but they were good. And then I had also a lamb tikka wok, which I was craving for something like Asian or Indian. We had a chicken curry the other day at Royal Court that I thought it was very plain, I didn't like it. it. It was missing flavors, it was missing culture, it was missing time, it was missing everything. This was very good in my opinion. It was, was well spiced, it, it had a kick. You know, I can feel like they use the right amount of spices and it went really well with the other meats that I have also, which was the chicken. Um, that was good, I mean, it wasn't my favorite one, but when I mix it with the uh, tikka sauce, it came out perfectly. And then the brisket was awesome. Uh, it was moist, it was like tender, uh, it had a nice flavor. So overall, I think I'm very happy. Uh, I think Cabanas is missing the amount of var variety of food that they have on uh, Marceline Market at The Wish. They have more options there and but overall, I think they have a good selection here and what they do, they do it well. So I'm happy with that. I just spoke to my friend Ray, who's not on camera, and he let me know that, first of all, hold on, your salad, your Cobb salad? Loved his Cobb salad, it's pre-made there, and it looks really professional, he loved that. Uh, the tomato thing that's in the picture now that you're seeing, he did not like, he said it was terrible. He did like the brisket, he said it cut like a brisket, had a good chew to it. And the sauce was too much. But you know what's good about the sauce? And I see Pete doing it too. You can just move it over to the side a little bit. You, can, you don't have to have that much sauce on it. He had a corn salsa that he thought was fantastic. The peel and eat shrimp, he said, was not slimy and was not chewy. He thought it was pretty good. So as far as shrimp goes, you were happy with it. Happy with it so far. Okay, so now we move on to dessert. And, you know, my experience and my opinion is that dessert normally is where Disney falls down on the job consistently, all the time, everywhere. Um, I don't know what it is about desserts. Uh, they are usually designed to look much better than they taste. And unfortunately, this was no exception. Um, I tried three different desserts. Um, I got a lemon cheesecake. I got a carrot cake. And I got something called the Chocolate Marquee. Um, let me start with the Chocolate Marquee, because that was excellent. Um, it, it's almost like, uh, Panda described it as an adult chocolate pudding. I don't know what makes it adult, because um, there's no liquor in it, but uh, it definitely, uh, definitely, that sounds right. Almost being like chocolate frosting. Um, it's sweet, it's rich, it's chocolatey. It was actually pretty good, I gotta be honest. That, that was pretty good. Uh, but then we move on to the carrot cake. No, just no. Uh, this was not a carrot cake. Uh, this 
the overwhelming flavor in this was orange. What they're doing, putting orange in a carrot cake, I have no idea. Um, and I don't even believe this is a cream cheese frosting on it. If it is, it is the worst cream cheese frosting I've ever had. Um, maybe a buttercream. Um, but looks cute. But as usual, Disney desserts. Looks good, tastes like crap. I had to edit myself there real quick. Um, then there is this travesty of a cheesecake. To call this a cheesecake, uh, first of all, a cheesecake is going to have a graham cracker crust. This has a graham cracker dusting. There's hardly any crust on it at all. Uh, the consistency of it is way too light and fluffy to be a cheesecake. Again, I'm almost thinking there's no cream, like cream cheese in this, or like, or the cream cheese is in cheesecake, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm almost thinking like there's none, or it's something that's so off-brand that when you cook with it, it comes out like this. Um, these are, you know, ult overall really disappointing. I was really disappointed by these. Um, and it, you know, and it's a shame because like I said, you know, what was coming off of the uh, buffet was really quite good. So desserts, not so much. So just to quickly reiterate, I tasted the carrot cake uh, prior to Pete giving me his opinion. It's not carrot cake for me, and I like carrot cake. That is not a cream cheese frosting, and I don't know what's going on in the inside. I've seen sometimes they've put an orange zest on the top of the carrot cake, but this was all orange. They could call it an orange cake, and it might even be successful if that's what you're expecting. The cheesecake, no, fails on every level. It is not the consistency of a cheesecake. There's nothing going on there for me. The uh, chocolate marquee that I tasted from Pete, I didn't get it. I liked it a lot. And to me, I thought of like a, a Jello uh, snack pack instant pudding, but upgraded for an adult. Very rich, but I kept going back to it. I wanted more of it. Um, my friend Ray also, who he made one other comment that's worth noting. He came here alone for breakfast. And even though we're not reviewing breakfast, he thought it was nice that he was walking around with his tray and they took him to a table, found him a table and sat him down. So there's still good Disney customer service, sometimes lacking in the parks these days, but coming back, but it's always on the cruise ship. Um, so he also had cookies that are very thick, but he said did not have a lot of chocolate in them or a lot of flavor. Uh, he liked the uh, cheesecake a little bit more because of the lemon flavor from it. Other than that, he wasn't so impressed either with the desserts. So I wouldn't be going back for dessert. So for today, they had a special crepe station. Uh, basically, they just have them there and you can put all the toppings that you want. I did mine, mine with uh, whipped cream, caramel sauce, and they have also like chocolate, um, white, and regular, like real chocolate. Um, it was good. I mean, it really depends on what you put in there, um, but they were good, so I enjoy it. Uh, but I also have a, a piece of this thing um, that, yeah, well, I didn't even finish it. It was like too much of too little. <laughs> It was too, too like, uh, I don't know. I don't even want to remember that, but the, the crepe was good. Okay, so that's our look at Cabanas for lunch on board the Disney Fantasy. And to boil it all down, uh, the buffet items, pretty good. Uh, the desserts, not so much. Uh, so take it for what it's worth, but nice option for lunch nice option for lunch. So that will do it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time. Until then, have a great one. Whoops. <laughs> I, I got to talk with my hands. Have a great one. I'm going to blame you.